my father was Irish uh, Catholic, and my mother wasn't following any religious tradition, but my father thought I should do Catholic, and that was fine with her. So I went through catechism and some of the Catholic schools and a Catholic high school, a Jesuit high school. So I was around Catholicism pretty much from the time I was young. I, I was also aware uh, from my mother that there are many different spiritual ways <laughs> that she introduced me to uh, besides Catholicism because her background was Methodist, but she chose not to follow that. Uh, but she was very aware of world religion, uh, many world religions, and introduced me to that by the time I was 15. So I respected my Catholic ways, and I grew up in them, but I realized there's a lot of different spiritual ways, and they're all extremely valuable and profound. So I just grew up in it. And then once I entered the Jesuits, it just deepened deepened all that knowledge uh, that I had as a child. It became more and more integrated into my life. And uh, it was um, in my Jesuit training, they let us go out for summers sometimes. Uh, I went on the Colville Res and then I went over to Fort Belknap Hayes for different summers. And I only would have, you know, a few weeks there. But I, I felt when I was there, I was really happy and I was supposed to be teaching catechism, but I liked riding horses better. And so if, when the kids come with their horses, I said, let's go. And then I, so it would be a very short catechism class, and then I'd ride horses all day <laughs> and chew tobacco. So I, um, and there was the same, that was Colville Resident. When I went to Fort Belknap Hayes, same thing. I ended up riding all the time because I wasn't a very good teacher anyway, catechism, so it was much better just to spend time with them, the young people riding out in the hills. And so I, I felt even then that this is, the, I like these people, uh, I like the uh, strength of their life and the intensity of their living. Uh, and it's always tr some tragedy, but also a lot of joy. And I, it was just a glimpse and then when 1973 came around, I had been ordained, and I was a couple of years at Gonzaga University. And just one morning, I, I realized I want to go back on, I want to go to the res. And I asked an uh, older Jesuit who had been on the res for over 40 years, 50 years at that time, I said, I want to go out on the res. And he said, well, uh, we got nobody in Nispelum on the Colville res. Do you want to go there? And I said, I'll go there. And I just had a feeling that I wanted to do that. And my first uh, couple of months in, in Nespelum, I was moved into the back of the church and lived in this village, in the village. And uh, I was uh, in shock a lot. I, there were, I realized how little I knew. Uh, I'd gone to school a long time, but I realized how little I knew about life. Uh, and what was hitting me most of all was the amount of tragedy and uh, the loss of so many young lives. And it was really knocking me around. And I had led a more uh, protected life before then. So this was my first uh, entrance into life. And it knocked me over. Uh, but I wanted to stay. Uh, I wanted to stay. And I wanted to learn. And I, I think from the get-go, the elders knew I wanted to learn. I realized that what I knew had somehow fell out of my head and that I wanted to be taught uh, how to live here in a good way. And even in the midst of all the tragedy and suffering and struggle, and there was a lot of poverty then on the res, and uh, even in the midst of that, there was also immense amounts of love and friendship extended to me and started to become part of families. And then I eventually went from, I would be in Nespelum, then I went to Keller, and then Inchilium, three different communities on that res. And um, I, I fell in love with the people. And then once that happens, uh, then you're in. <laughs> you're in, because you want to give your life then for them, yeah.
but it took a long time for you to be accepted into the community. They watched me very carefully, and, and, and that's hard when you're not used to that, but they don't necessarily uh, extend a lot of warmth until they know you. And so I, I felt that. I thought maybe there's something wrong with me because they're not relating to me very much or they won't even look at me. Uh, so I'll give you a great example. When I first came, I went to agency to get some baseballs and bats because I was going to coach a little, men, little men's team and a little fellas team. And um, no one would talk to me and no one would look at me. And, but they got, the, they got the stuff for me, but nobody was relating to me. And I thought, gee, I must be a horrible person, you know. Well, then about three years later, I went back on another errand to the agency, and it took me three hours just to move from one part of the building to the other because everybody was relating because they knew me. Mm -hmm. And they'd seen my work, and they felt comfortable with me. So the difference is remarkable. But I un it's very hard at first because they don't know you yeah. and they have no reason to trust you or invest in you. And they also want to know if you're going to stay. Yeah. Are you going to be here? Mm -hmm. Are you passing through? Or what, what's going on here? You know, they want to know. And I said, well, I'm here. You know, I'm here. I, I want to stay here. And that, that makes a difference yeah. because people pass through. Yeah, and they don't uh, stay there too long. No, no. Or they'll stay there for a couple of years and they'll go. Yeah, else. yeah. And I, 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 the the priests ahead of me were very good at staying, mm -hmm. and uh, and I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that because I found an intensity of love that I have never found anywhere else, mm -hmm. and a and an intensity of pain that I've never found anywhere else. So, and the two, the two rock back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, we enter great periods of s sorrow and grieving and pain, struggle, and then also the immense moments of friendship and love and learning, mm -hmm. uh, beginning to learn the life ways. Mm -hmm. you know, I would say after eight years, after about eight years, I was asked to talk to the high school graduation class from Nespelum area. And I felt that was the first time I felt I could talk better from inside their life way. Mm. Not mine, but out inside the values and teachings that are given to them. Mm -hmm. And so I felt a little better then, a little better than in sharing uh, what was normal to them and uh, that they would hear from their elders mm -hmm. and their teachers. So that started to feel better. That started to feel better because I'd had a lot of good teachers mm -hmm. already. Yeah, already. Even on the reservation? Yes. Well, I, I rarely left. Mm -hmm. So I, I was became, <laughs> I just lived there. <laughs> it was like your new home. Yes, I didn't want to leave. So I preferred, actually preferred it uh, to other places. So yeah, it's, it's just a lot of learning, mm -hmm. a lot of learning, and it takes forever. So it's still going on <laughs> after all these years. I, from the get-go, when I went to Nespelum, uh, one of the young men, his mother was in uh, the longhouse and with the Nespers, the Nimipu, the Joseph's band, and uh, he, he said, can you take me down there? He wanted to come to Mass, and so I drove him down to the longhouse, and I said, uh, can I come in? <laughs> can I come in? He said, you know, well, yeah. So I went in through the kitchen, and uh, the longhouse had the kitchen. It was the old longhouse, and then where they would pray and sing. So I went in the kitchen. There, were all the grandmas were there. Some of them close to a hundred years old. Some of them had been born late 1800s. They were powerful grandmas, and uh, and they all. When I came in, they all looked at me, and they all started laughing. They thought it was funny. Now, what was I doing in their kitchen? Because no priest had ever <laughs> entered their kitchen before. <laughs> and they liked it. It was fun. And they were kidding me. And then, and then Virginia Andrews, who was the leader, said, um, you go in and, and, and meet Joe Red Thunder. 
And when I went in to meet, he's the male leader then of the Longhouse Ceremonies, uh, Washot. And, uh, and I went in to meet Joe, and he said, oh, so glad, glad you're here. Uh, sit by me. Sit right here by me. And just watch, and you'll learn our ways. So I felt very comfortable in the Longhouse. I loved it. And then I had the church. So I had the church and the Longhouse. Uh, the other spiritual ways uh, were I was hungry for them, and um, I had a dear friend, uh, an elder, Dutch Monahan, his Indian name was Tumaskin, and I asked him, so I knew he followed the old ways, and he sweat every morning, sweat lodge, and uh, I said, do you think I could ever join you? And he said, yes, no problem, so just show up early. <laughs> and so I would show up very early, <laughs> and then we would just sweat together. And he began to teach me the sweat lodge ceremonies and what it was about and the experience of it. And in all honesty, the first sweat, I thought I was going to die from the heat. I just wasn't used to it. <laughs> I said, I'm going to die. My heart was racing, and I thought, oh, man, I'm not going to make it through this. But I stuck it out. and. And he just said, no, you'll be, all, you'll be okay, you know. And so he was making his prayer songs and, and teaching me. And then there's a little creek there where we bathed. And uh, it was my first, he was my teacher. And I sweat with other uh, people in other times. Um, but he was my first teacher. Mm -hmm. And what, I, what he taught me was invaluable <laughs> to me. Invaluable. But uh, in, when I was in, within there with him, uh, it was him and I, and, and he said, you know, when we're here, we're inside, the, we're right next to the Creator's heart, and we're right inside of his ribs. And we're inside, so you're right near the heart of our Creator, and you can talk to him. You can um, express your heart and uh, tears or whatever you need, you know. And uh, it was... It was beautiful. It was my first, first training in that. Mm. I'm very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> very lucky. I'd say a lot of, <coughs> a lot of non-natives can really only read about stuff like that. Yes. Um, they never really, but when they experience it, it's really life transforming. Definitely, I, I feel extremely blessed, mm -hmm. and they were so kind to me. And that's when all my years on the call, the 11 years there, mm -hmm. and. Um, they knew I, I wanted to learn and, and that I was open to learning. And uh, they also, I went to started some winter dances then, going to jump dances or winter dances, medicine dances in their way, interior Salish way. And uh, I loved it. I loved it. And I, I learned a lot, a lot uh, from the teachers and things I'll never forget and the power the power of those ceremonies, which they go all night, so mm -hmm. they had a lot of power. Well, they had the canoe journeys. They went all, all night. Yeah. To yeah. Where the individual tribes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Long one too. You have to be, you got to stay in there. Yeah. <laughs> you got to hang in there. Well, when it's done, it's done. Yeah. There's really no time limit. And dawn's coming. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, for me, and I think the, many people say you've got to choose, you know, one or the other. And when I started on the Call of Res and then when I went to the coast, you know, the coast sailage, there's another world I had to start in again. Right. So then we have Sion Longhouse and uh, all the teachings. There's so much strong culture on the coast. It's very intact. And I lived at Swinomish. So it's a very strong community and very strong in the old ways. So uh, all that I'd experienced earlier, I found in another form mm -hmm. because it's distinct. It's another spiritual expression. Mm -hmm. Even though they both are linguistically connected, the interior Salish and coastal, uh, the dialects are different, and, and the expression in the longhouse, the whole thing is another world that I had to learn. And their whole manner of uh, being in the world and 
over on the, when I was on the east side, it was horses, you know, uh -huh. and uh, cows and forests, and and on the this side is water, mm -hmm. and fishing and boats and nets and and all the learning is connected to the sea and to the rivers and uh, so there's there's like some similarities, but also yes, same respect, different. same respect for the holy, and for same respect. What I've learned a lot has deepened since I've been with the Coast Salish, but it's a deep respect for all spiritual ways. And that you, you choose, you know, what your spirit is drawn to. As Bob Joe from Swinomish used to say, your spirit will, will tell you, you know, that, oh, I belong here, or I feel nourished here, my spirit is nourished here in the longhouse, or in the church, or whatever it is, and um, follow that, mm -hmm. and everybody's unique, and they'll follow this, or follow that, or all that, but what I admire so much on the Coast Salish way of life is the embrace of all spiritual ways. Mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if someone comes with humility and honesty, and just is, try, is really wanting to learn, they'll take you and they'll teach you. And it's so long, many, many years <clears throat> to teach you. But if you're honest and humble and straightforward, you know, they'll, they'll stick with you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I learned them, uh, it was very well exemplified at Swindamish where we had Longhouse or Sion or Skalalitud and then we had Catholic Church, we had Shaker Church, we had Pentecostal Church. Mm -hmm. And we endeavored to respect all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of times in our ceremonies, like at wakes and funerals, mm -hmm. we would include everyone, all the different ways of praying, with equal respect. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned from the Swinomish and Tulalip and Lummi elders, is that we respect it. And Upper Skagit, still Guamish, just the respect for all that are not pompous or uh, aggressive mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh, oppressive, mm -hmm. any of those qualities, uh, but open, mm -hmm. open heart, open mind. So that's what I loved. Mm -hmm. so when, a, when a young person comes up in that atmosphere, then they make their choices. Mm -hmm. each, and I think each native person makes his own choice. And they make, say, I'm just going to be longhouse. That's what I want to do. Or I'm not ready for anything. Mm -hmm. And if we're, if we're having a rough time or out with drugs and alcohol and stuff, I'm not ready yet. But when they're ready, then they say, I want to do longhouse. You know, I want to do Sion or Skolalitut. Mm -hmm. Or I want to go Catholic, usually like my grandmother, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, or Pentecost. Or Indian Shaker Church. They'll, their, their spirit will tell them. And, and uh, my teacher, Bob Joe, did all of them. He was at home anywhere. If he went to the church, he was a Catholic. He said, that's my one home. But then uh, he goes to Longhouse. He's happy there. He's a, he's a black paint singer. He can go to Pentecost and sing the songs. He can go to the Sheikh and sing the song. He was home everywhere. And we traveled all the time together. So I think I learned that, you know, you just go wherever you are, it's good. Yeah. And you just soak in the power that's there. And good medicine. Yeah, yeah. Good medicine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very much. And I, like most of my friends that I have, and I've known some since young, young guys and girls, they're both. They grew up in both things. They grew up in church and they grew up in the longhouse. And so they just go, they draw, draw on the strength of either one, or there's the draw on the healing strength of the shaker, or the joy of the songs, you know, the Pentecost and all that. Whatever they want to put together for their strength. Mm -hmm. And for some, it's just AA or, or wellbriety, and that's their spiritual way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think once, once that happens, it opens the spiritual world. If they get into wellbriety and sobriety and, and get cleaned up and get focused in a good way, live for others, then one of the spiritual ways will appeal to them.
Maybe not. Maybe that's enough mm -hmm. for some. But then a lot of my friends, once they made that transition, and, and I made that transition myself, I had to give up alcohol. You know, and then the world opens up because you're not messing mm -hmm. interference with the spiritual world. Yeah. So you have to be clean and sober and, and, and serious. <laughs> and, and then they make their choices. It doesn't have to be institutionalized. It's just a way of life. Mm -hmm. So they say, with close to this, they say, Hachusada, or this, the, let me say, slang, slang, and it's a, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And it's not institutional, it's a way you live. <laughs> and I think that's what young people, in my limited horizon, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're open, you know, to the possibility of God or possibility of the holy, but they're not sure how they, they want to approach the holy or that presence that we know is among us, the presence of the holy. And, and I think for Native people, they have a great awareness of that. It's just inbuilt, the sense of the Creator, the Holy, in all, all living ones. It's just every, every, in everything. Uh, as John Daniels, I was listening to him talk from Muckleshoot the other day, he said, uh, for us, everything's spiritual. <laughs> we, we feed the water, we feed, we feed the canoes, we take care of our people. We respect all people. That's our way, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they can live that wherever you are. You just live that, you know. Yeah. Whatever the elders had was really something. The ones that I knew, the real old timers, mm -hmm. the most respected spiritual people and the healers, mm -hmm. and I've been so lucky to be around them, they know who they are and they know the medicine they carry whether it can be catholic see own whatever they have they know who they are mm -hmm. and they're living a certain way and that's beautiful and, and that's what i would wish for all young people and then and, and they find teachers you have to you have to see it mm -hmm. and hear it and, and be around it. So I've been lucky on the coast. There was, you know, Isidore Tom Patius, T. Patius from Lummi, phenomenal, phenomenal healer. And just to be in his presence, mm -hmm. it was just luminous, and to watch him work. And he always allowed me to be with him. And, and uh, so, because their culture is like this, mm -hmm. it's not like, like that, you're, you know, get away, you know, if you're serious and sincere, you know, you come and sit by me. You watch how, how the work goes. And then the other was uh, uh, Kenny Moses Sr., Kukwetchup, and um, he was luminous, too. I, the first time I heard his songs, I just went, oh, they're so beautiful. And they're, they were both red paint, mm -hmm. and they're healers. And just to be around them is fantastic to learn from them. So like the, the, like the lived experience. That's the lived is everything. <laughs> it is everything, I think. It's not, you can't get it out of a book. I mean, you can, like some people get a lot out of the Bible, and I do too, and that's fine, you know, that's fine. This Bible is life itself, mm -hmm. is the teacher. Like one of the, this native man, I met him down in, um, I was in Colombia, and he was a magnificent person. Just by luck, I got to know him. He was a beautiful native man, indigenous man. And uh, he said, you have your book, we have our book. This is our book. <laughs> the whole universe is our book. You have this book. Your book is really good. It's good. I, I admire it. This book is wonderful, you know, for us. Mm -hmm. And so there, I think it's learning by uh, being in the world and being aware mm -hmm. and listening, observing, being quiet. Mm -hmm. So you can hear, hear if they want to send you words or songs or how they want to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
from the, you know, the dear ones on the other side, the beloved, or from the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus. All that world is right on us. <laughs> and they, they draw from it, you know, all 